Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome to another edition of Tobin Does Dumb Shit. Let me tell you something. I don't like story maps. I think they're bad slideshows. People tend to value in order. The top four things of value on the web are speed, familiarity, reliability, and delight. Finding something that just is cool. And story maps tend to fail all these. They're slow. They're, people don't really know what to do with them. They're generally not the most reliable things because you got all that infrastructure powering these story maps. And they're generally not delightful. Um, every once in a while, like maybe the New York Times data viz team will put something out and I'll go, ooh, that's cool. But generally, meh. So I'm not a big fan, but life happens and We've been talking about telling stories with the quality of life stuff for a while, which in my head I was hearing that going, no, 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 no. But eventually it came back around and I thought, all right, I'm going to have to make one of these. Now, when I get a project like this, my first thought is, how can I do this with the least amount of work possible? And here's what I did. The quality of life project, the Explorer, is built using Svelte and it has this map component. And the map component sizes to whatever its container is which is super handy, is we have an iframe and an embed.html. So you can stick this iframe code right into your whatever WordPress SharePoint monstrosity you have and have it this whatever map you're looking at, whatever, whatever you have selected, you can embed it right on your page. Cool. All this does is just an HTML page with one div in it that's set to 100% view width and height, and it just throws the map component in it. And the map size of that component, it's using the same Svelte store, it takes all these same arguments for what metric you're looking at and what things you have selected. Those are all in the hash, exact same hash down here. And Bob's your uncle, you got an iframe. I thought, well, that's a good start. And the nice thing about this, which I didn't plan for at the time, but it works out, when you change the hash of an iframe source URL, uh, it doesn't reload the iframe. You're just changing the hash. So if your page knows to respond to hash changes, then you've got built-in transitions between things that you can set with the hash. Perfect, because that's exactly what the Quality Life Project does. So now I've got the map that I can change metrics on. I need some slides. And for that, I went with this thing I made. I made a CSS only slideshow framework, no JavaScript whatsoever. It's using like CSS scroll snap. Um, I built this because I was doing a slideshow and I was thinking, you know, it'd be more fun than making slides for this presentation I got coming up would be making a thing that shows slides. So that's what I did. It's a very little bit of CSS. It's, it's really kind of cool. So it does things like automatically scaling the text to the viewport and full size images and videos and all that kind of crap. Like, cool, I can use this with the other thing to make the third thing. And that's what I did. Now I've got this. And this is essentially that iframe combined with that slideshow. Uh, the iframe is set to 100% view width and view height and it's set to sticky. So it's always on the page. And then what you see on the slideshow, this whole area being a section, a section takes up the whole page, that is on here as well. It's just set to transparent. And I have a div inside that section that I put this little bit of content and I'm flex boxing it to the bottom right. So in terms of uh, HTML, it looks like this. This section, the first one is this ID of start. It's my first slide. It's covering the whole thing. And inside that, I have this div with a class of slide. And it is this little thing over here. And I can put whatever I want there, pictures and text and what have you. Now, as you scroll, either with your up, down arrows or, or with your finger or with your mouse wheel or with page up and down, you get these transitions. Now, it's transitioning between metrics. It's also doing something else. Is also changing the uh, pitch in some cases, and that did need a little bit of JavaScript. So this this thing has JavaScript in it. Now what I'm doing there 
is each section, I, I made an intersection observer. So each time a section is on the screen, it fires this function. And I have this configuration for each slide, and each one of these is an ID of that particular section. So if it gets to character-1, if that's the ID, it changes the hash to metric 47, and then it sends a message to the iframe. And it does this with a content window post message. Now over on the map, I had to add this little bit of code to the map on uh, Quality Life. It's listening for this message. And here's this message. And the message itself is the JSON configuration for a map libre fly to. If it gets a configuration for that, it'll do a map.fly to that message. If it gets an empty object, it'll just zoom to the full extent. That way I can do that very quickly. So on this first slide, it goes to the full extent. The second one, it's changing the bearing and pitch and zoom and uh, what have you. And quality of life map, when you pitch it, you get 3D because, well, why not? Why wouldn't you want that? And you can just go through the slides like that. It works with, uh, works with arrow keys, mouse wheel, your finger on a touchscreen device. I did leave a little bit of scroll bar here so you can like do a scroll bar draggy thing too if you want. So yeah, it's story map. I made it. I'm not proud of it. But it, it's a thing that happened. The only other things to note, and I'll put links to, I, I threw this on GitHub for funsies. I'll put links to this stuff so you can, you can fiddle around with it. The things to note is you have to make the map, uh, well, you've got choices there. I had this section do a pointer pass through or pointer events none. So you can do things like hover over these things and interact with the map a little bit. But you have to turn off the interactivity on the map. Otherwise, a scroll event on the map will do its scroll thing on the map. That's not what we're going for here. So you have to set that to non-interactive. So the only scroll event that's going to be firing is for the body. So you have to do that. And the other neat thing I, I haven't done yet, but I'm going to change. One issue with websites when you're setting 100% view height and you're on a phone, those things when you scroll, depending on where you put your URL bar, if you scroll up or down, your 100% view height gets shifted up or down because it's showing the URL bar now. So you scroll down on, what, on a web page, you're fine, it's the whole screen. You scroll up a little bit with your finger, now that URL bar is there and you get this ugly scroll effect because now your 100% view height is, is taking up more than what you actually have on screen. But in CSS now, we have dynamic view width and height or DVH or, or DVW. And that is set to dynamically change based on uh, browser UI elements that may come in or out. So now you can set 100% DVH or dynamic view height, and it'll change what that height is if that UI component like that address bar comes in. So that was kind of annoying me a bit on a phone. And it looks like this is supported pretty much most places. So you can do something where you can set 100% view height and then set 100% dynamic view height. And if your browser supports it, it'll use that second one. Cool. Yeah, not proud of it. It's, it's a thing I did and you can do it too and share the shame with me. I hope everybody's doing well and happy and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.